Testicles, testicles, yeah. testicles. Welcome, Adi of Sol, Stafid. Tack för det. Thank you. How are you today? I'm really good. I've uh, uh, painted my house, half of it today. Uh, spent four hours on the uh, my day job, being a radio host. Oops. And now I'm doing a uh, an interview for a for a movie yeah. in a nice weather in my favorite park in Reykjavik. Can you please give us the story of Solstavir? Yeah, so uh, in sort of 90, around, well, it all starts with Sweden, right? <laughs> uh, around 90, I mean, sort of discover 91, you know, the Swedish death metal bands and European death metal bands and Americans, of course. Uh, and then, of course, I guess like globally, you're into death metal before you went thrash metal and the Slayer and the Metallica stuff. And then sort of around 93, 4, Sort of something new is happening, and I guess death metal became a little bit tiring. You've heard all the Morris Sound albums too many times, and and uh, black metal arrived, and that was very fresh. I mean, what is that? It's uh, it's like a new thing. So uh, we formed the black metal band. Sort of l- the idea came. Sort of we didn't know how do you form a black metal band. I mean, there's no members and how you can do that. Uh, so in 95, we formed Soltavir. Uh, there was no metal in Iceland in 95 because death metal had died. Black metal never properly arrived. So we formed Soltavir in 95. We make our first demo. Uh, we, we are fully into tape trading. Uh, we make 100 cassettes, we sell them. Uh, we make our first uh, sort of MCD which people made back in the day on a Czech label, which came out in 1996, called uh, Til Valhadlar. Um, yeah, so uh, we sort of do more underground stuff. Our first album comes out, uh, first full length comes out 2002, after many delays. And we didn't really, sort of, almost like 10 years after formation, we start going to Europe. To, to become a live band. I think it was like 2004. I think it was 2004. The first time you sort of go to, go to the Denmark. Out of all places, our first gig abroad uh, outside of Iceland is in Denmark. The, our drummer trashed the drum kit. Uh, it was not our drum kit. Uh, people got mad. Uh, we were cool. We looked cool. We played good music. Uh, our friend Sami from Spine Farm, he was there. He signed us on uh, on the spot. It's like you're cool. I'm signing you guys. So he signed us to Spine Farm. He did two albums for Spine Farm. Uh, then we left Spine Farm. Uh, we met Season of Mist. Then we've done like a few albums for Season of Mist. And so you know, the live ball started rolling basically after that gig. So from 2004. We've been really touring and touring and touring, and I think the most we did around, I don't know, 2014, 13, uh, I think we did 200 shows a year. So every band that's doing 200 shows a year, that's a lot. Yeah. So um, now we have uh, more kids, more bands, more, uh, more jobs, more vibes. So we're not doing 200 shows a year. But uh, we are enjoying it more than ever, being in a band. And uh, shows are getting bigger, tours are getting longer, so uh, we're not quitting yet. Mm. Were you the first black metal band here in Iceland? Uh, second wave of black metal, yes. Uh, there's of course, it's like uh, a band was. Uh, we have a very. Let's just say if uh, if Bathory only did one album in the 80s and kind of no one knew about it mm. until the 90s we have one of those adventures so that's sort of the first called flames of hell that came out in the 80s but uh we were the first band to do second wave black metal and we did an album in 96 and so no one had done that before mm. so yeah in a way you could say that yeah how has the metal scene changed since you started here? Black metal was uh, 
not well first of all <clears throat> i mean death metal even died in 93 4 there were no bands here active or sort of most of the bands you know, like quit or the members would go into indie bands and uh, black metal didn't really arrive properly here what shall i say around 2000 um, because we never we never played live our first show was like in 99 i think um, so black metal arrived a little bit around 2000 but the wave that's going on now maybe arrived so like 2010 so it's very much different i mean there was no now it's flooded in metal bands mm. even black metal bands mm. uh in 1995 now there was very we were very much an island with no scene it was like 10 guys listening to black metal and we used to drink moonshine together in caves with dark throne and ghetto blasters <laughs> sounds great great good times good times what does the name solstafil mean we we were gonna we were gonna go for satanic corpse <laughs> or soul stabit. I'm kind of glad we went with uh, soul stabit. It has aged quite well. Well, I can tell you a good story here. Well, in the meaning is a uh, soul stroller, mm. uh, crepuscular rays. It's a weather term. It's when the you know the sun rays come through the clouds. Yeah. So uh, we were gonna. Re I told the member of this band this. We were gonna rip off the Icelandic version of Solstice. We thought Solstice is a great band name. <laughs> so we we're gonna use Solstice, uh, the Icelandic version. There was some misunderstanding. So Solstice is not Solstavir, it's Solstava. Uh, this was not my idea. <laughs> but uh, we ended up with Solstavir. It's a pretty good name. I like it today. Mm. It's it's eight, like I said, eight well. If we would have chosen Satan Corpse, yeah, I wouldn't have aged as well. So, uh, soul stuff it was, yeah. Your latest album came out 2020. Are you working on something new? We've actually recorded another album, right. which we did in uh, in May. So, on the 10th of May, we went to, uh, up north to a studio in a kind of remote desolate fjord uh, it's a really cool uh, analog tape studio and um, yeah we did uh, 10 songs there uh, it's not coming out until next year we just you know there was some we were sort of losing our drummer away for a while because he was having a new child. So we just, you know, time-wise, we said, we're going to write the album before this kid arrives. Because after the child arrives, you sort of, you can't really commit to it. So we just uh, used the first six months of this uh, year to write a lot. So the album is recorded. Uh, the music. I haven't re done the vocals yet. Okay. So it's 90% uh, recorded. Right. Coming out next year. Nice. Exciting. Who writes the lyrics? Uh, I've usually written like half of it. Our former drummer sort of wrote half of it with me. Now the current drummer is writing half of it with me. Mm -hmm. So uh, writing lyrics is not really... It's not my favorite thing to do. Uh, I love a lot of things about creating music. Writing music, uh, I find very boring. Uh, I love being in the studio, recording it. I love that part. Writing it, no, it's uh, not, not my favorite thing. I found out uh, through the years that I get mostly inspired by seeing other bands play live. It's... Uh, that's sort of direct inspiration because if I see a band and I get the, the sentence in my head, damn, I wish I wrote that song. It's amazing. I get goosebumps seeing some bands. That's the most inspiration that I get. Indirect, sort of, through, in, through the consciousness is like, I mean, you can be in nature and all that stuff. It sort of gets into you differently. 
but um, seeing other bands play live, it's uh, it's more probably my biggest inspiration. And what bands are they? If I all, I'm only gonna talk about Swedish inspiration. Okay. Okay. Since you're Swedish, <laughs> uh, first of all, Appa. It's because we live always sort of admired pop music. If you was mentioning in French pop music, I would see the band called Air. Uh, Abba's, you know, just the music-wise, just like the Beatles. Mm. You know, it's uh, great music. Uh, M Tumt, I love M Tumt. You can't really hear it in Solstavir, but there's some. Sometimes we squeezed it in. You, you wouldn't hear it. Helicopters, another band. Uh, I could point out a few direct influences. This is helicopters. This is helicopters. Um, and uh, many other bands, uh, sort of uh, Cardigans, another Swedish band that I love. So it's a uh, very different. Uh, well, if I if I move a little bit from Sweden to England, I've got to say like this new wave bands. Uh, if it's Joy Division or David Bowie or Fields of the Nephilim, as well. So it's a lot of variety of inspiration. What genre are you in? I don't know. I've often said that we are a uh, non-heavy metal, heavy metal band. <laughs> because we're not like Judas Priest, but we're very much heavy metal band in that sense. Because we have distorted guitars, even screaming into the microphones. We have fast drumming. We even have drop-down guitars. But we don't sound like Morbid Angel or Judas Priest. And I think the ultimate sort of uh, like Nine Inch Nails. You're not gonna say what are they? Industrial band? No, just like Nine Inch Nails. Ramstein? Are they heavy metal band? No, just like Ramstein. Pink Floyd? I just oh they are uh, hippie rock? No, not really. They're not really like Led Zeppelin or something, Jethro Tull or whatever. Mm. They're their own. Exactly. I would like love to think that we are in our own genre. Some people would probably disagree, but I don't care about that. I would say you are your own genre. Thank you. I think that's the ultimate compliment. What are your lyrics about? Well, <clears throat> when we've just, in the beginning, we would totally be into this uh, uh, Norse mythology because that was sort of we, we looked at black metal. Okay, then we saw enslaved, and this is another thing. And like I told you, the solstice story. I've told the enslaved guys this because we thought these damn Norwegians are singing in Icelandic. If they are, well, I guess we are as well. So we started singing in Icelandic and we would be totally sort of into this mythology and uh, we would write sort of anti-Christian, very sort of pagan lyrics, you know, historical stuff, uh, but but uh, Norse history. Uh, and then sort of when... I started singing more clean. And that basically first time happened in December 2007 in Göteborg. How's my Swedish accent? That's very good. Very good. <laughs> uh, so I would, uh, we were um, on this cult album of ours. There's a song called Cult, the title song. Uh, it's a very soft vocals. And I had done that in English and then I had recorded it in English. Then I said, told the guys, I want to try this Icelandic thing that I have here. I was very insecure about it because it's very soft. Mm. And singing when you're in a metal band, it's a macho thing. It's a man stuff. It's heavy metal. So I was there singing very soft stuff, very clean. Not being a singer, I'm just a guy that screams into the microphone. So I was singing this very personal stuff. And then I told the guys, well, I'll delete this. We're going for the English. And the guys totally outvoted me. No, we're keeping this. So that was sort of the first time that this sort of clean vocal stuff. And Does it feel more authentic? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's the whole thing. When it felt more personal uh, to write personal lyrics when he's singing clean. Mm. I can't be singing about flying dragons. It's personal. Mm. It's deep and, you know. 
So it became more like vulnerable singing, you know, daily life. I mean, daily life is not just fucking rainbows and unicorns. It can be. And all of us have been dealing with some dark shit in the past. So it's, uh, it's very easy uh, to sort of go to the place lyric-wise. So it's, uh, that's basically just uh, uh, dealing with the depression, dealing with anxiety, dealing with alcoholism, drug addiction, uh, death of love, uh, love, life, sort of failures, all that sort of stuff. I don't relate today about, well, this is another tricky thing. Sometimes I experience that we are sort of emotional band with clean vocals. And sometimes I think we are a Slayer. And sometimes I think we are ACDC with Bon Scott. So sort of it, because it's a tricky part. If you just motorhead, you just motorhead. Very easy. I love motorhead, don't get me wrong. But so sometimes I love the the Slayer version or the Mayhem version. But I'm, I'm, I feel that we're privileged to have all these styles that we mix. But uh, this has to be fun. Mm. Uh, and I love now expressing the lyrics in a nice way that I think is so, sort of uh, truthful. Well, there is, for instance, I mean, it's very, very dark lyrics on our last album. I mean, there's a song about, basically, about a very grotesque murder. It's about a, a, a woman getting uh, sexually assaulted uh, violently, and uh, she gets her revenge by killing the abuser. And it's very graphic detailed. When he came up with it, like, what the fuck? Where does this come from? I don't know, just a... <laughs> but it's beautifully detailed. The words he came up with, like, oh my God, I, I love singing it. It's a terrible thing. But uh, here I am singing that from the heart because it's such a tragic thing. But I don't know if I could be in a Cannibal Corpse cover band singing it from the heart. I read that people here in Iceland are not that religious. 31% say that they are not religious and 10% are atheists. And 5% of people practice Asatru, the traditional Norse religion. How do you look upon religion? Interesting question. Uh, I think um, we are very much, uh, we don't care. I'm sort of grown up in my, you know, upbringing. Uh, my parents just, you know, never spoke about religion thing. I never saw any clues or hints that they were religious. No one in my family. Uh, people, you know, uh, sort of go into this, uh, what's this confirmation thing you do yes, when you're 13? Yeah. yeah. Confirmation. Confirmation, yeah. yeah. And of when of you course, were. everybody does that and did that when I was a kid because you get money. You get gifts and presents and, you know, and who gives a shit? It's like, if you're going to get confirmation into, uh, I believe. it's, you know, how she understands when she, it doesn't matter because uh, you don't believe it. I moved to Norway in 1997 in school and I was very, sorry, and, uh, the difference between how the Christian Norwegians were, mm. I was very surprised because you don't have that here, like oh this part of the top, uh, this part of the country is very Christian. Like, how awkward because we don't have it here. Mm. I don't think people they don't just uh, don't give a shit. We were the first. Uh, it was in the uh, 70s. I think we were the first European country, or in the world, that had. Uh, also true, legally registered. You could be a member of also true society. Uh, and we all did that sort of in the 90s because we're just, you know, just discovering it. Um, I don't look at that as a religion. It's just like, uh, 
it's part of uh, our story history, and uh, it's uh, yeah. I do not look at it as, hist as, as as religion at all. It's more maybe your history. Yeah, it's uh, being in touch with nature, and you know you can't uh, you can't uh, deny the power of nature, and. Uh, I've become way much more spiritual the last 10 years, spending more time in nature. Uh, just uh, doing stuff to uh, gain peace of mind. Meditation. Meditation, yeah, just uh, I do that. I love being in uh, cold water today. I uh, go swim in the sea in the winter. I swim in... Uh, cold waterfalls, uh, I hike mountains, I try to spend time in uh, forests, well not many forests here but there, we, we do have trees, it's a big myth that there are no trees here, but there are trees, we so are you can see, yeah yeah, trees, yes. so it's just you know more of that, I didn't really enjoy that uh, in my teenage years and my early 20s, mm -hmm. I just, I tried, I would go, try it, it's just didn't click uh, so now I'm you know into that stuff nice. um, you know I, you know I like reading about uh, Buddhism mm -hmm. just to I don't even look at this as uh, religion well of course people say it is but yeah I mean you read this stuff it's like oh this is really clever mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah it's, uh, but then again what I lo love about sort of spirituality is just uh, I don't have to explain it. There's no book that you can point out. No, 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 no. You can't do this, can't do that. I don't give a shit. I don't have to explain it. It's not a test. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, it's uh, something like nature being higher power. And it's, uh, I think the more you try to explain it, the more stupid it sounds. Mm. So that's why I do I try not to explain it. Here I am trying to explain it. And uh, I'm already like, oh, just don't try to explain it. And related to that, what is Satanism to you? Satanism, it's a funny topic. Uh, mm, well, <laughs> well, didn't uh, Christianity invent Satanism? So that you could say that uh, there's, of course, you know, the dark side. Uh, it's funny because life is like Star Wars. There's the Jedi side, which can be spirituality, do good things, karma, all that, love, the dark side. Do drugs, worship Satan, it's just, you know, instant power, all that stuff, uh, you know, it, it's, it's closer to reality than uh, that is. Lord of the Rings, it's, it's a shame, it's like uh, darkness and light. Uh, Satanism, is it, uh, is it fairy tale or is it just uh, freedom? Uh, I believe just as much in Satanism as I believe in Jesus Christ and I believe, believe in Donald Duck it's the or Santa Claus. It's the same, it's the same. What about occultism? Is that something that you have come in contact with? Occultism? occultism. No, not really. Uh, no, I mean, it's, it's fascinating with this... Uh, this uh, this occultism thing it's it, it's it's very fascinating but once once people are saying they're spiritual and they say but i believe in jesus christ i'm like oh fuck you blew, you blew it there when people say they're into occ occultism i'm like okay interested but i worship satan i'm like oh you blew it there so it's uh i don't know it i th find it interesting and that, I, I guess it stops there, uh, more than interesting. Iceland has a history of Vikings, and it's very present here on Iceland. What do you think about that? 
Well, uh, we have sometimes a, sometimes uh, debates come up if uh, there were Vikings at all, or were we just uh, peaceful farmers? Uh, we don't really know. I mean, there's, there's no books or no pictures. No pictures, <laughs> and they were all written written uh, by Christians uh, a long time mm-hmm. after that. Uh, I I don't know. It's folklore, fairy tales. Uh, I think uh, I think we like it to be stronger than it is. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, if people want to believe it, it's cute, it's fun, but uh, same as if people want to believe in stuff. If, 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 don't take it too seriously. You're gonna it's gonna look weird. How do you look upon society here in Iceland? I don't know. Um, I just... Uh, I, I mean, I try to live more simple life these days. Uh, just doing things that uh, give me peace of mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's taken quite a time to learn that. Sort of, uh, you have different priorities today than you had to... It's, more diff- different when you have a child, sort of, uh, is the world going to hell or has it always been like this? I mean, it's kind of strange that, you know, we have a, a war again, people talk about nuclear weapons again, but then again, people have always been at war, so is it just the circle of life, people talking about war or fear of war? The real evil is, of course, for instance, drug addiction. Uh, that's very dark when you see people really sinking deep into that and all the loved ones are losing sleep for years or burying their children or suicide uh, uh, the rates are getting higher and higher and higher. Young men are killing themselves. Uh, it has changed today because you can't really sit, you know, this whole nationalism crap. You can't be running around say, we are the best. Those days are over. You can't really do it today. Uh, but we grew up like, you know, Iceland is the best, waving flags and shit. Those days are over. Nationalism. There was something because more innocent, yeah. I guess, in the 90s. Uh, well, the weirdest thing that I sort of encountered is how smaller we have been or more innocent or childish. When I moved to Norway in 97, uh, I was writing my band name in runes, in just in class, just some like people do, in runes. And my teacher came up to me and said in Norwegian, Adalbjörn, er du en nazist? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> a Nazi? Wow. Are you out of your mind? I, this was the most, most stupid, bizarre question that I ever heard. Yeah. I had no idea that neo-Nazis would be using runes. Mm. Never ever had that encountered my world. I didn't know about that. I was just like, I'm just a lonely country boy here. I don't know about this shit. Really? Are you joking? Or you know? So I guess I guess now we know better. We have sort of entered the new world. Uh, we are a very young nation because uh, we were uh, sort of almost eating dirt, living in dirt houses until the Americans came here with money into the economy, uh, rock and roll radio. Uh, American cars, they built the airports, they brought millions of dollars into the economy. You were already a proper nation, like many other European nations. We were like third world country here, living in the backyard of Denmark. And then, of course, after the Second World War, we became independent. So things changed. So we are a very young nation. Uh, almost like childish, like a teenager, compared to the rest of Europe. Mm. 
You have an extensive tour coming up. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, we uh, well, we did a tour with uh, Caratonian in February. We did five weeks, a very successful tour. Extremely nice going back on the road, just seeing people uh, post-COVID. Yes. Uh, because before that, uh, we didn't know. Are people going to show up? Because touring, so costs are skyrocketing. And all the bands started touring after COVID. So the competition was a lot. Uh, very successful tour. Uh, so now we're going again. But now we are supporting Amorphous. Very cool. Uh, been into Amorphous since, what, 1993 or four or something. Uh, so we're doing three weeks with Amorphous, supporting them. Uh, with Lost Society as well, from Finland. And then we're doing two weeks on our own in Scandinavia. So we're basically doing three weeks with uh, Amorphis, uh, supporting them. And then we're doing headline tour for two weeks in Scandinavia. We're doing, you know, Stavanger and Bergen and Oslo and Göteborg, uh, Stockholm. Yes. Uh, three gigs in Finland as well. And... Uh, in Denmark, uh, you know, the favorite, the, the, the most fun thing about this band is that uh, I'm quarter Danish. So when we play in Denmark, I speak Danish between songs. Nice. I'm half Danish. I don't. So we can go snack and dance. No, yeah, they can, uh, yeah, they can go there. No. So when I, when I speak Danish between songs, <laughs> the guys are, of course, they find it embarrassing <laughs> because, you know. They're not as intelligent as I am because <laughs> I can speak understand. Danish. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so now some things just for fun. What do you mean? Sorry, I thought this interview has been very fun so far. <laughs> of course. But now I will challenge you on the three true crime stories we have in the film to see if you know any of them. <sighs> okay, so I'm ready. If I say Beast of Satan, what do you say then? Say it again if you say... Beasts of Satan. Runes of Beverest. No. Beasts of Satan. Yes. Heard of it? Band. No. Beasts of Satan. No. It's an Italian cult in the late 90s, beginning of 2000, that uh, played in a band called Ferocity. You really had me there. It was an Italian satanic cult that played in a band called Ferocity. The cult murdered three people, but was accused for 14 more crimes. Yeah. Not in the 90s? No, in the beginning of 2000. Yeah, I'm true necro cult. I only listen to black metal from the 90s. <laughs> Have you heard about this then? Deicide and a terror bombing in Stockholm in the 90s. Yeah. Yes, mm. you know of that story? Uh, I remember uh, something about, uh, yeah. Shall I show you the photo that I have my phone? Mm -hmm. Shall Let's shall I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just you know, since you're talking about it, yeah. I remember first hearing uh, DSID. I'm a huge DSID fan. Yeah. So. Okay. Here it is. Probably. Sh I'm scrolling down my. I'm scrolling down my uh, my wall. Facebook. Ah, it it's it's you know. So I, I can't, when I've, you know, we heard so many stories about Glenn Benton <laughs> and DSI. Uh, I can imagine. Yeah. But, you know, he refused to fly, being too close to God. Uh, of course, was going to kill himself <laughs> by suicide at the age of 33 when he reached Jesus Christ age and He's all that stuff. He's been exercised. I, I, but this, now this bombing, what was it again? It was at Fryshuset in Stockholm. I played there, yeah. It was there that a bomb took off, intended for Glenn Benton. Really? I'm really disappointed in myself that I didn't remember the Glenn Benton story. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Yeah. <gasps> One last thing I wanted to talk about is the Islandiga book. Uh, before you meet someone here in Iceland, you need to find out if they could be a relative. Do you have a fun story about that? We can ask, uh, we can check if you can have sex or not, but <laughs> just by touching phones. I mean, other, no, I'm kidding. Cool. <laughs> no, it, I think the, f the story is just like this, because li like, you'd li like you said, uh, I've never tried this in reality, <laughs> but we, I can go, it's called Islandinga Bok. Yep. 
I can go and see if this one is related to me. And everybody's related here in the ninth generation. So oh. some of us are, you know, everybody is eighth or ninth. But so we don't, that doesn't really count. But you can find through the Eastlandinga book if you relate it like fourth, five. Then you can say, oh, uncle, cousin, whatever. Oh, okay. But uh, everybody here is related to eighth or ninth. Interesting. It's a very cool thing, actually. All right. Thank you so much, Adi. It was great to have you. And good luck with your tour and your upcoming album. We look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we be laughing hysterically? <laughs> 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 Who's funding that? Are you selling cocaine or you got a support somewhere? Nah, no, I just sell oh, myself from the street. Yes. You are? You self? <laughs> what? It's raining. Yeah, Just go in exactly, here. Yeah, okay. We'll I look forward to seeing the stuff. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Bye. 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 Bye.